you, everybody. It's good to be here. Um, as Charlie said, uh, I'm Zach Soflin. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of Layer. Um, and I'll get into a little bit about what, what Layer is and um, what you can do with it. But more to th today, I'm going to talk um, mainly about uh, how we can abstract uh, project-specific problems and apply them uh, in, a more, in a more broad sense, essentially. So how do we, how do we take problems that we experience on a, on a project and make it repeatable? Uh, uh, or, you know, as a solution that can be that can be applied to other projects or even um, other companies uh, from there, and Core Studio is doing a great job of that. I mean, the stuff you guys are showing is awesome. So I'm excited about that marketplace. Um, so a little background first. I I uh, was an architect for about eight years. Oh, sorry, we got to synchronize our clicks here. So <laughs> there we go. I was an architect for about um, eight years at a firm called BVH Architecture in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, it's a 50-person firm. Um, we do uh, uh, all types of uh, different work. Uh, and one of the, one of the projects that, that I was working on at the time was uh, for the Nebraska State Capitol. So this was a uh, HVAC replacement project. Um, it was a preservation project, one where we had to go into every single room and uh, essentially do a f detailed conditions assessment of the entire building. So um, we'd walk into every room and need to collect uh, information about you know, the, the ductwork, the larger, older equipment that we were taking out and replacing with newer, smaller equipment um, as, we, uh, as, we, as we went. So that the initial problem was that the, the building itself had about 1,365 rooms, 1,152 windows, and this, uh, we had to gather about, I don't know, 57 data points per room, 20, 20 data points per window, uh, which resulted in about 100,000 pieces of unique data that we had to gather in the field and ultimately connect back to uh, our, our model in order to design um, the project. Not to mention, while we were out in the field, we took about 39,000 photos. Uh, so it was, a, it was a lot of data that we had of this, these existing conditions, and we had to find a way to now leverage it and use it in our design process. So the way that this, this would typically look, or the way that we'd typically go about this project, would uh, we'd be out in the field with a clipboard and uh, uh, our forms printed out, and we'd jot down the answers to all of the questions as we went into each room. And then we'd proceed to take digital photos on our, on our camera of uh, the entire room, hoping that when we got back to the office, we were able to find um, what we were looking for. So um, I'm sure a lot, are, a lot of you are familiar with um, this. Um, come back to the office after a long day and you have a giant stack of digital photos, um, a, a stack of papers, and then we went about the process of actually scanning that in, separating them out into folders, um, and again, hopefully, we were able to find what we were looking for months or even years down the road uh, when we were actually designing the space that, that the um, data was referenced to. So we knew that this project uh, wasn't going to, the scale and multiplicity of this project wasn't going to allow us to go about this in the way that we would have typically, typically done this. So um, what we did have was this really detailed um, Revit model, um, geometrically, uh, that uh, our, our team spent a couple hundred hours um, over on the site uh, verifying and, and building, building out. Uh, so we had this really detailed geometry, but what we lacked was a connection between this geometry and the actual information, um, like photos, notes, tasks, field data. Uh, we, we lacked a connection um, between the two. So to say it succinctly, um, the information that we needed to design wasn't connected to the tool that we actually used to produce the design. Um, meaning that we had all of these hurdles um, and gaps between you know, our actual building data that we gathered out in the field and our actual design software. So um, we, we, we approached this as, as the team was kind of building this uh, Revit model. Uh, we, we started looking at ways we could start to solve this. So um, we looked at, well, can we just take a laptop over there, wheel it around, and start to input all this information into parameters into Revit so that we have all this embedded um, conditions data directly in our, in our project model. Um, that was immediately ruled out just because uh, of the weight of that, and obviously with uh, photos, um, um, just next to impossible as far as you know, pulling 39,000 photos into, into our model. So we looked at potentially, you know, can we 
can we just maintain a separate database with all this information and then um, reference it as we're going about designing our model, um, which was a valid option, but again, with the scale of our project, um, any time that we could save in the gap between the information and uh, the model was, was imperative as we were designing these spaces. So ultimately what we ended up on was, um, well, what if we built a uh, prototype that allowed us to uh, collect all this data out in the field on mobile devices and um, tablets, bring it back into the office, and um, uh, connect it back to our, to our Revit model. So keeping the sources of information separate, but um, tightly linking them together so that as we're, as we're using our model, we can immediately see the pertinent information related to where we're at. So um, the idea, I mean, essentially got rid of those hurdles, and um, as we're working in our design software, we're able to see all of that information and photos and everything else as we were working. Um, that, that was the concept, I guess it's, I should say. Oops. Sorry. I have two slides behind here. Uh, so th this is a kind of a picture of uh, where we started with, um, with this, which, uh, you know, we've got our Revit model, which has really detailed geometry and dimensional data. Um, we've got simple text data and maybe some product info um, built into our, our model itself. Um, but then we looked at, can, well, can we augment this um, this same informational um, organization, you know, how Revit um, works by, by element, uh, can we augment it with our own data types, like um, conversations and notes, um, files and photos, tasks, more complex field data, or relational data, um, things like that, and store it in this separate um, platform, but tightly link it together and again, store it in the same um, uh, uh, way that, that uh, Revit does. So we set out and kind of to build a prototype of this and what this what this looked like, um, and we and we ended up with essentially these two interfaces, um, our uh, Revit add-in and the, uh, uh, the the integration um, into Revit, and then our desktop and iOS uh, iOS applications. So the way that this was worked was um, in Revit, uh, it connected to the Rooms and the Windows category, and essentially anytime something changed within our model those changes got pushed, um, related to those two categories, those changes got pushed to our um, uh, database, our cloud data database. Um, in the, and then on the uh, mobile devices uh, or uh, desktop apps, you're able to see all of those rooms um, coming through in, in essentially a list, all those rooms and windows coming through in a list. Um, along with the, the photos that we've taken in the field along with that. So as users would click on um, individual rooms, uh, they, would, they would be brought into the form, you know, uh, essentially the, the fields that we were actually gathering. So this was a process of essentially uh, working with the, the project manager and kind of hard coding all these questions in um, at, at first um, with this prototype. So um, the project manager would determine, okay, well, we, we want to we check and see what the floor material is, is demo required, questions like that, and then we would design the form and uh, um, put it into uh, this application. So at the end of the day, um, on the left-hand side, a, a user would walk into a room, um, capture the information, and then uh, immediately take photos um, on, their, on their device uh, associated with that room. So um, when we came back to the office, we were able to um, see for room 361A all of the data and all of the, all of the photos and files related to that particular room. So ultimately, um, the Revit add-in also, uh, on, the, on the back end, the way that this worked is it connected uh, to our, um, our add-in connected to our database and actually navigated uh, the page itself um, to the data as you're, as you're moving throughout your model. So um, as you're clicking on individual rooms or windows, um, you would immediately see all of the field data along with any uh, files or uh, photos related to um, that particular item. So it was a way for us to, again, shorten the gap between the information that we actually needed to design while we were in our model versus having to go onto a file server and search around for that information. So um, at this point, again, we, we had kind of um, focused on the specific problem of the capital, not really looked beyond that um, at broader applications. Um, uh, we were just continued to kind of solve our problems that we had um, on, the, on the capital project um, and didn't really look 
much broader than that at this point. And another, another problem that we immediately ran into uh, as we started the survey was um, the images are great. Uh, like, for example, these are all the images of Law Library 325, but um, it became immediately apparent that we had to figure out, all right, how do we actually tell which direction this is facing or uh, know if this is actually the west wall or the east wall of these rooms. This is kind of a maze of a building, and so um, uh, we, we actually utilized the device's uh, compass to capture the um, cardinal direction of the image itself. So um, each image as it was captured was not only attached to the room that it belonged to, but also uh, um, which direction it was facing when we took the, took the image. There was quite a few times as well where um, we knew that there was, there was an issue related to, um, uh, 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 an issue related to, you know, captured in a photo, um, but didn't really have a way to cross-reference those images, so we could always go to a room and see the photos, but we couldn't necessarily um, uh, find information from the photos and then see the attached room to that as well. So um, one of the benefits of running this all on a, a cloud platform was that we uh, were able to kind of run these through um, a, a vision API and a, um, a, a trained machine learning model to actually identify those attributes um, within, within, within this, within these images. So, you know, it would approximate um, things like uh, what, what, what uh, um, items or attributes of the photo uh, were, and then we could immediately search those tags um, as we went. So some examples of that, I would identify things like vents and um, approximate whether, whether it was a wall or a floor, um, identify materials, um, you know, the look and feel of spaces. Um, this, is, this was actually used, we, we, we trained several models um, uh, with some of our photos. This was actually um, trained just via our, um, just the default um, vision API uh, with uh, the Google Cloud platform and um, it thinks this is an arcade. So, uh, which is actually the, the capital, so um, sometimes it gets that information wrong. It would also capture uh, um, text, so we could, we could then search that, that text as well. Um, identify people and their emotional state, apparently, which we never, never actually use that, but um, this is one of our uh, um, surveyors who's apparently purely joyful, and we're 85% sure. So, <laughs> um, and so ultimately, at the end of the day, we were able to come back and, and text search, um, uh, you know, via keywords and find images that we were looking for, like a crack in a window or uh, something like that, much like what Core Studios, not near as advanced as what Core Studio is doing with AI, but in a similar fashion, um, being able to search deficiencies and find the rooms or the windows that were attached to those deficiencies. Um, so, um, once that project kind of wrapped up, we, we again, hadn't really thought beyond that one project. We um, had kind of focused on how do we solve the specific problem, but um, immediately we realized that, you know, if we broadened this um, application and, its, and some of the features and components within this application, um, we, we could really do some, uh, we, this could really apply to any project, um, for that matter, and uh, even beyond design, um, how could this apply to projects um, throughout construction and into operations um, as this kind of extended documentation tool. So the, uh, uh, we kind of took a step back and identified what are those key attributes that um, uh, we need to focus on that actually made this tool you know, useful to our, to our project team. And, and um, he, these are the four. Um, it, it had to be a flexible platform. Um, the, context, the idea of contextualized information was incredibly important. Um, the real-time collaboration um, uh, of uh, information and data was important, and as well as actually connecting this to the tool that designers are using um, to actually produce projects. So the first one, um, the flexible platform, we, uh, we, again, started looking at ways we could actually um, take this even beyond just design and into construction and operations. And uh, for, the, for the capital, we didn't really, again, think about this broader. We were actually hard coding all these fields and questions in. Um, and, uh, you know, if the, if the user needed a change, we actually had to make the change on the back end and deploy a new version and things like that. But, um, one of the one of the uh, uh, pieces that we realized is that well, what if we what if we focus more on building ground level tools 
um, that allowed users to take those tools and create their own workflows instead of defining those workflows um, for users. Like this is specifically what it does, punch lists or RFIs or whatever else. Um, we, we took the approach of, of kind of designing um, uh, lower level tools that users could um, use to create their own, their own workflows. Sorry, there we go. So um, uh, essentially, um, th this kind of was fleshed out um, in one way via our uh, uh, field. So essentially, we have a library of field types that you can use to actually compile um, your own workflows and um, connect back to um, Revit and, and other tools as well as we go uh, throughout the, the design process. So now you can actually start to you know, create your own conditions assessments or facility audits. Um, you can use this for punch lists, all kinds of different workflows. It really opened up um, uh, the, the opportunities for creating all kinds of different workflows throughout not only design, but also construction uh, itself. Okay, so to talk about the, um, the, uh, the idea of customizable um, uh, or uh, contextual information um, to, to speak to that kind of key attribute. Um, again, this goes back to the, the problem that we had initially, which was the building data that we had wasn't connected to the tool we were actually designing in. So um, traditionally what we have um, typically in uh, design and construction and operations is all of these different silos of information, um, emails, uh, file servers, models, um, uh, messaging apps, task uh, managers, things like that, where all of this information kind of exists in these different silos, and while we can connect them together, um, they're still stored in this more traditional sense. So um, we're not advocating, to, to be clear, I'm not advocating that like uh, layer is a replacement for all of these things, but there is a portion of data that's stored in all of this, um, all of these different platforms and silos that um, uh, would be better suited stored in the context of your actual building versus in folders and email chains and uh, tasks and stuff like that. So um, we, we took a different approach to this, um, this idea of contextualized data, which was, well, can we start to store those like conversations, um, those photos, um, that existing field data, tasks, um, uh, things like that directly on the building elements themselves, much like Revit parameters, but in uh, a, a richer way, essentially. So um, an office room might have a set of comments, it might have photos associated with it, it might have existing condition data, as well as being connected to other um, actual pieces within our, within our model. So uh, a chair might have photos, uh, a TV might have cut sheets associated with it, um, uh, the storefront might have tasks um, for, assigned to the design team as well as product information um, or specifications attached to it. So we're kind of taking that different approach of, of how, we, how we actually store and reference data. So uh, a task, this is a shot of um, our task manager within layer. A task would be assigned to a design team member, but again, um, it has context. So it's actually referencing elements directly from our model versus, uh, versus just um, existing in an email chain or a task manager somewhere. Um, similarly, we, we, we allow you to, within the document editor, to actually reference um, items with hashtags within your model um, so you can start to add, again, context to your actual notes um, themselves. And so a key to all of this, all of these different pieces is uh, the idea of real-time collaboration for our team um, and the capital was imperative because sometimes we had four different teams out in the field, um, several teams back in the office, and so um, uh, duplication of efforts was important to avoid. And so we, uh, um, we uh, everything that happens within layer happens in real time. So it's much like a Google document in that as you're editing information, you're seeing exactly where your team members are at, the context of their um, comments and uh, um, field notes, and uh, um, pulling it all into uh, kind of our one singular platform. So now how this actually connects back to Revit as it kind of showed in the prototype um, uh, version is uh, via our Revit add-in. So essentially now uh, the, way that, the way that information is connected back to the model is via um, our, our dashboard here. So we actually have a, uh, um, a layer um, add-in that allows you to connect models uh, back to your uh, specific project and then um, 
sync specific categories from within your model. So um, you can sync any of the default Revit categories like rooms, doors, windows, sheets, um, views, whatever it is, you can sync those. And at that point, once that's done, from that point on, all of that information stays in sync with our actual project and is then accessible um, on any device. So, um, and the way that the way that the real usefulness of this becomes not only you know pre-populating your data into our system, but uh, we also track your position within your model, um, pulling up pertinent and relevant information as you're navigating. So you can see as I click on Lounge 223, we're seeing all of the information, files, and photos related to Lounge 223. Here's the cafeteria. Um, and this is as, us actually looking at a task list. I got assigned a task. I can click on that individual task, and it will show me in my model exactly where that was captured at. Um, and then the clicking on cafeteria, you can see that it obviously pulls up data related to that cafeteria and any files, notes, or tasks related to it. We also um, uh, have the ability to pull this information back out um, uh, of, of layer back into Revit. So um, you can actually um, sync the information that you're gathering from layer um, back, into, back into the actual model. So um, to, to wrap up, we, we are a we are product that launched I think April 2nd, so um, we, we feel like we have a kind of a, ro a robust product. Um, but we have a giant roadmap ahead of us for what we um, plan on doing with it. So um, anyway, I invite you all to um, join us in uh, checking it out. There's a there's a free trial, and we'd love to get your feedback mainly. Again, feedback at this point for us is probably the most important. So, all right, thank you. Appreciate it.